Kobi Rashid, you mentioned earlier that you are not a linguist, but you are an economist. So, here. Governments in developing countries are constantly scrambling to find enough resources for their general population. Is it therefore realistic to expect them to dedicate already scarce resources to help relatively small minority communities? Why not? Absolutely. Those people are part of the population just like everyone else. And statistics say that 15% of the population is disabled in some way. So that would be like saying, oh, 30% of the population is children, so we won't include them. We won't provide services to them. It's that same kind of idea. I think that every member of every community counts. And it makes sense for the government to provide for those groups because they are humans and they have a contribution to give back to society. As I was saying before, 80% of disabled people are not employed, which is a huge waste of human potential. These are all people who could contribute to their societies, who could be productive citizens. They may be the next inventor who comes up with some kind of electric car or whatever the next new invention may be, and that's a huge resource within a society that's being wasted if we're not providing for that. So my answer is definitely yes, and they should not just be encouraged to provide that support, they should be required to su provide that support and those resources. Often, the older you get, the more likely you are to become disabled yourself. So even people who do not generally consider themselves as disabled may end up within that population if they are injured in some way, if they start to lose their vision or their hearing, often happens with older people. So it's not just a sense of, oh, it's those other people over there. It's all of us as humans and how we see ourselves and as we become older and older, the government taking the responsibility to provide for every single citizen. Joe Murray. I think that um, people know that the UN um, proposal or proposals in um, Mexico, excuse me, the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, when they actually uh, ratified uh, this, this law here, uh, it needs to be ratified by each country before it's put into effect. So it has to be the will of the people. It has to be the will of each country. You know, here we have uh, people interacting with those with disabilities. And, of course, uh, economics has, uh, you know, is a piece of that. And Kubi, you know, was very articulate in talking about that. And I think that deaf people are part of the human population. So we need to address that issue. And there is a policy called progressive realization, or principle, excuse me. So... The government can't change laws overnight, can't reform society overnight. It is um, a constant work and a progressive change that happens among um, societies. And I think that that really starts with the UN Convention on People with Disabilities. But Amy Wilson, you mentioned the Millennium Development Goals. Some critics say that countries are fixated on meeting those goals to the point that they will not invest in measures that don't show up on the MDGs. And this would seem to speak to the issue of why it's a problem that, that the Millennium Development Goals don't specifically reference disability. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right, Kojo. If we're not in there as an indicator to be able to measure, then where are we? We're not there. 